The very first recorded sin that we have in our history was the sin of Iblis. And what was the sin of Iblis? Allah explicitly mentions in the Quran, Aba wastakbara wa kana min al kafirin. He was arrogant and he refused. And because of this, he became of the ungrateful. Arrogance is one of the cardinal sins of our religion. In fact, Ibn Taymiyyah mentions that the sin of arrogance is typically more despised to Allah than even the sin of shirk. Arrogance or kibr is worse than paganism. How? Why? Ibn Taymiyyah says, at least the pagan, at least the mushrik occasionally worships Allah. But the arrogant person never worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we see in the character of Iblis, where Iblis refused to acknowledge the truth. And it is because of this that the commandments that have come, that the Quranic verses that have come censuring arrogance are some of the most strictest in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala links the fire of Jahannam with those who are arrogant. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ those who are too arrogant to worship me, those are the people that shall enter Jahannam humiliated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Enter the doors of Jahannam to dwell forever in it. And what an evil abode. And who is it for? للمتكبرين. Those who are arrogant in this world. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, should I not inform you of every person who will go to Jahannam? He said, it is the one who is mustakbir, arrogant, ja'bari, obnoxious, and egotistical. The one who thinks himself better than other people, that is the one that is going to Jahannam. No human being has the right to feel arrogant. No human being has the right to feel superior to another created object. And this is why our Prophet wasallam said that Allah has sworn that no one with an atom's weight of arrogance shall enter Jannah. No one who has kibr in their hearts shall ever enter Jannah. Jannah is haram for the one who feels himself superior, for the one who is walking around with a speck of arrogance in his or her heart. And that is why it is so crucial that we examine our hearts. We're always looking at ourselves. Am I being arrogant? Am I having that sense of kibr? If so, we need to eliminate. And our Prophet ﷺ illustrated for us. He clarified for us what is the essence of arrogance. Once a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, I like to wear good clothes. Is this arrogance? Is it haram for me to look good, to look dignified? Our Prophet ﷺ said, No, that's not arrogance. Arrogance is not to live a comfortable life and to enjoy the blessings of Allah. That's not arrogance. What is arrogance? He said explicitly, arrogance is to look down at other people and to reject the truth when it comes to you. He defined arrogance in two categories. One of them is spiritual arrogance and one of them is the arrogance of this dunya. As for the arrogance of the deen, it is to refuse to accept the truth. You have a position, you think it is right and then it is proven wrong. And just because you said it and the other person has proven wrong to you, you refuse to accept. And of course, Iblis is the sheikh of this arrogance. Iblis is the one who began it. He knew that Adam was worthy of sajda. He knew that he should have obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he refused to accept the truth to the very end. That is the quintessential arrogance of Iblis, knowing the truth, recognizing the truth, and then rejecting it. And that is the worst of the two categories. Us as Muslims, the definition of Islam is humility. The definition of Islam is to accept the truth wherever it comes from. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-Hikmatu Dhalatul Mu'min, wisdom and nuggets of truth. This is something that anywhere you find it, the believer picks it from. Doesn't matter where it comes from. Dhalatul Mu'min means wherever you find it, with your enemy, with your friend, with an unknown authority, somebody benefits you with knowledge. Somebody teaches you something, you will take it and you will thank Allah for it. Doesn't matter who it comes from. So arrogance, the first category, to reject the truth when it is presented to you. And if you find yourself holding a position and you refuse to ever budge from that position, deep down inside you know that you're wrong, but you refuse to budge, realize you are following literally in the footsteps of Iblis. So be careful and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second category of arrogance is غَمْطٌ nas To look down at other people. To think that you are better than them for any reason. 
for any reason. If you think you're better than them because of the color of your skin, then you're nothing but a racist. If you think you're better than them because you have more wealth than them, you have more privilege than them, then you are somebody who is obnoxious thinking that just because you have a better bank account, you are better than somebody else. If you think you are better than them because of religion, then you don't have religion. Because if you had religion, you wouldn't have that element of kibir. Never look at other people and say, I am better than them. Now, this does not mean that you approve of the other people's lifestyles. If somebody has a sin and you don't have that sin, you thank Allah, I don't have that sin. But never think yourself better than the person. You may thank Allah for not having the sin. That's not thinking you're better. But the person, you do not know. Never forget that hadith in Sahih Muslim of the Prophet ﷺ telling us there were two people once upon a time. One of them was a a drunkard and the other one used to go to the mosque all the time worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time the mosque goer would pass by the drunkard he would tell him fear Allah go and pray and the drunkard would ignore him one day the drunkard got angry at this man and he said who do you think you are to tell me to always go to the mosque go mind your own business did Allah place you as my boss the guy was rude and it's very wrong for him to say this but what was the response of this quote-unquote muttaqi what was the response of the masjid goer he became Came angry and he felt he is better than this drunkard and he said wallahi Allah will never forgive you now the first person was a drunkard he was a sinner he's a sinful man and he said something rude he was obnoxious he shouldn't have done that the second person became the judge jury and executioner the second person took on the status of Allah Azza wa Jal and said, you're never going to be forgiven. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah said to that man, and who are you to speak in my name? Who are you to say who can be forgiven or not? Because of that one statement, Allah is saying in the hadith, because of that one statement, all of your good deeds have gone to waste and I have forgiven that man. The man was a sinner, but deep down inside, he knew he was a sinner. He wasn't arrogant against Allah. He became irritated with another human being, and that is a sin, but there's no arrogance there. As for the one who's going to the mosque all the time, the one who thought himself better, he suffered from the sin of arrogance, and he said, I'm going to Jannah, you're going to Jahannam. And that attitude was a bigger sin in the eyes of Allah than a lifetime of that drunkard's evil. So we understand what it means to be arrogant here, to think you are better than somebody. And again, Again, don't mix the two things. You may thank Allah for having elements of piety. Yes, you thank Allah you're going to the masjid. Yes, you see somebody who's drunkard, you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm not doing that sin. Okay, but do not ever think that you as an individual have a higher status in the eyes of Allah than another person because you do not know your fate and you do not know that person's fate. And that is why the importance of humility is something that the Quran constantly reminds us of because the only antidote to arrogance is humility. الذين يمشون على الأرض